Right, so screens have been on AIOs for a few years now, so what do you do if you're a brand new company wanting to break into the PC calling space? A curved screen, of course. That's right, the PC hardware niche is entering its curved screen era. Similar to back in 2014 when Samsung released the first ever curved glass phone. I mean, we're, we're a decade late, but better late than never, right? So this is the Trix Panorama 360. We actually briefly checked out the booth at Computex back in June when they had this on display, but we have one in hand right now, and today we're gonna take a closer look right after this quick word from today sponsor. This video is brought to you by BOBKeys.com. You guys know the drill, you've just finished building your brand new PC, you boot it up and bam, that hideous activate Windows watermark appears. And the worst part is you forgot to budget $200 for an activation key from Microsoft because you spent it all on RGB, but that's okay. Because you don't need to spend $200, you can pick one up from today's video sponsor BOBKeys.com for a tenth of the price. The best part is you can use my code TT25 for 25% off, which takes this already cheap Windows 10 Pro key from around $22 to $16. If you're in the UK, that's £13. You place your order, your activation code gets added to your orders page, you whack it into the Windows activation screen, and boom, you're fully activated, no more watermarks being burned into your retinas. TT25, 25% off, link in description. All right, let's open it up. I have to say, for a brand new company, the packaging is actually very nice. Anyway, included in the box is the AIO. The fans are actually pre-installed, which is nice. And then we have an accessory bag containing all of the necessary mounting hardware and cables, along with an instruction manual. Take a look at the fans and radiator first. So these are high performance 120 millimeter RGB fans. They are pre-daisy chained to each other as well. Clean white radiator design with the Trix logo with white painted radiator fins to match. And then here's what you've all been waiting for, the curved display. I was kind of expecting the screen to be glossy, but it's not. It has this matte coating on it. Again, those super clean, futuristic looking design. And I also really like some of the details on the back side. As you can see, the cover can be removed, revealing the pump block itself. We have a little fan here to cool the VRMs on the motherboard with air being channeled out the side of the pump housing. Now, there's going to be a couple of different SKUs come in, available in 240 and 360 millimeter variants with or without RGB fans in black or white. We did see a pro model at Computex as well. As far as I'm aware, the only real difference was that you could rotate it. I don't have any confirmation on that model yet, but maybe we'll see it. Now that we'd had a bit of hands-on with the new cooler, it was time to install it into a PC to see what it looked like turned on. Look guys, I brought back the Tech Tesseract mugs when I visited the UK. Do you think we should bring back the merch store? Let me know in the comments. I absolutely love it when companies add a removable top bracket. It just makes installing everything so much easier. By the way, for those of you wanting a clearer look at how you connect this thing up, here's a top-down view of the included hub and cables with everything labeled to help you on your way. So it's only once it's turned on that you're finally able to realize the full beauty of this curved 6.5 inch AMOLED display. Vibrant colors, deep blacks, again I do kind of wish this was glossy for that extra bit of pop, but I guess the matte coating does help with reflections. Now resolution wise it's running 2K at 60Hz, some would say this is slightly overkill, but I mean as you can see, it does look very nice. Now you might be wondering how you customize this curved beauty. Fortunately, Trix did have a go at creating some software to let you do this. So after downloading and installing Canali, it was time to see what it could do. So here we have the homepage, a very simple layout. We've got Panorama, which is the screen, Rotor, which is the fans. We click on Panorama, it will take us to the screen settings. This is where you can choose between a bunch of presets. Now I believe there are seven presets altogether. You can hover over each one to kind of get a preview of the animation and then you just click on it to apply it. Now some of the presets are actually really cool. I especially like this one with the spaceman. You can kind of see when he grabs it, it comes through the screen. It has like a 3D effect, similar to those 3D billboards if you've ever seen them. So yeah, some pretty cool presets. I just wish there was more because I feel like half of these are, are just like either the Trikes logo or some weird early 2000s style animation. But anyway, down below we have the system information display. So we can select up to three items here. So I'm gonna select CPU and GPU temp. I can select what text color I want. And I can also uh, change the position of it. So if I wanna put it on the edge of the screen, I can do that. And there's even the option to apply or display the CPU and GPU badge as well. So it just basically puts the name of your component on there. Oh, and then there's also the option to add a filter as well. So you can see this is like a, a rain filter. Heading over then to the custom customization tab. This is where we can upload our own media to display on the screen. So I've got a couple of MP4s that I have prepared. Now it's quite important that you select the correct aspect ratio for the screen. It's actually two by one, 
So if I stretch this out here, and then you have to make sure that you match it up here, otherwise you won't be able to select what you uploaded. So we'll click on two by one. Again, we have the option here to display some system info. We'll click save and you'll see it will display on the screen. Now, obviously this one wraps around the whole display, but you do have the option to split the screen as well. So here, if we upload a couple of new files and we're gonna go for a one by one aspect ratio. So that's the first one, let's do another one. And then we'll put Mr. Rick Astley on the front screen and we'll put this car on the back. And then, yeah, you can see we've got two different videos playing at the same time. Now, one thing I did find out is that you can actually have two sets of system info displays. So if I click on the uh, the car right here, you can see I've got CPU temp and GPU temp, whereas Rick Astley is showing us the CPU usage and voltage. Now, if we click this menu button at the top, we can change the screen brightness as well as the speed of the fan. And then finally, there is a screen recording utility built in. So you can use this to create clips to upload to the display, which is pretty handy. Finally then, if we head over to the rotor tab, this is where we can customize the fans. So pretty basic functionality here. We can choose the RGB. So we've got different effects. We can go into here and choose what color we want. And then on the speed tab, this is where we can change the speed of the fans. So we have a bunch of presets down the side here, or we can just have the option to set our own manual fan curves. I feel like we're forgetting something. Oh yeah, performance. So this is using an Acer Tech cooling solution. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the time or resources that Tech Jesus has to compare this to every single cooler known to man with fancy graphs and thermal imaging cameras. But we are gonna do a real world test with not just any CPU, but the king of heat, the Intel Core i9-14900KS, which you really should be using a full custom loop for this, but we're gonna try it anyway. Oh, and by the way, I did go back and install an anti-bend bracket. I just forgot to film putting it in earlier because I'm an idiot. Let's see if it can handle the heat. We're currently in the menu and we're sitting around the 70s. Uh, let's hop into a game and uh, see what happens. So not too much change. We're kind of just hovering around the 70s on the CPU, which is really not too bad. Right, let's quit out of Cyberpunk and we're going to boot up Cinebench. Let's start a CPU multi-core test. This chip is rated to run at 100 safely from Intel. So, yep, there we go. 100. And you can probably hear those fans have ramped straight up as well. A chip like this, I would definitely recommend you go like full custom water cooling and put a couple of radiators on there. But yeah, I mean, for an all-in-one cooler, 360 millimeter, it's not like it's like extra thick or anything. This is fine. With all of that said and done, it's time to talk about the price. It's $350, so mega expensive, even more than NZXT's Kraken Z73 or the Ryogen 360 from ASUS. As is always the case with very high-end AIOs, you're mostly paying for looks than performance. That's not to say this doesn't perform well, it performs very well, but if you're on a budget, your best option is just picking up something like an Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 for $100 and call it a day. Despite the price though, I know there's definitely going to be a market for this because it does look incredible, and besides a prototype from Asus that we saw at Computex, there's no other AIO like this with a curved AMOLED display. Oh, and I did like the software as well, I, I thought they did a good job on that. I am curious though what you guys think, would you actually consider buying this, and what case would you put in? Let me know down below in the comments. If you want to check it out, I have the links down below in the description description, drop a like on this video if you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and if you want to watch another video, click right here. I'll see you all in the next one.